live stream, a broadcast that equips you for effective kingdom living. Today, we want to look at adjusting during crisis. Now, I want to begin by defining a crisis. A crisis is a time of intense difficulty, trouble, or danger. That just talks about the kinds of times we are living in right now with COVID-19. It is also a time when difficult decisions have to be made. And right now, the nations of the world have to make decisions. Families have to make decisions. And even you as a person, you are faced by a circumstance when you have to make decisions. It could be affecting your finances, your business, your work, your relationships, and virtually everything. Crisis times are times when decisions have to be made. But there's something also interesting about crisis. It happens suddenly. You have no time to prepare for it. You just wake up one morning and you find yourself in a crisis. When a crisis comes, it leaves many people as victims. However, there are people who are able to take advantage of the crisis and find an opportunity, either to make their lives better or to move on or simply to survive over that crisis. Now, such people are people who are able to adjust and adjust accordingly. Right now, it is important for you as a person to adjust. It is important for our families to also adjust. Even those of us who are doing ministry, we have had to adjust. For example, this broadcast was supposed to be a Sunday service, but slowly by slowly, I am also trying to adjust to the new realities of life. If you do not adjust to a crisis, then you become a victim and you forever live to complain about it. Right now, there are people complaining all over, on social media, on WhatsApp, on Facebook, using every opportunity to voice out their complaints. When you find people complaining, it is an indicator they have not been able to adjust to the crisis. In the word of God, there are certain people who went through a crisis. Some became victims, while others were able to adjust and adjust well. One of such characters is Daniel. We'll be looking at him in later broadcast. But this, this day, we want to look at one of the men called David in the Word of God. David is a man who towers in the Word of God. Quite a number of books are dedicated to his life and also um, to his son Solomon and to kings who came out of him. In fact, our Savior, Jesus Christ, is known in the book of Matthew chapter 1 and verse number 1 as the son of David, the son of Abraham. If there is a man who went through crisis in life, it was this man called David. Let's consider his life just briefly. David was anointed to be king, and for a long time, close to 20 years, he was king in waiting, moving from one cave to another cave. He was being pursued by two groups of enemies, the Philistines and Saul, who was supposed to be his mentor, who was supposed to give way for him to become king. He made himself into an enemy and was fighting David time in and again. Actually, these two people created a crisis in David's life. His life also took a positive trajectory. He was moving from one blessing to another blessing. David also was a mighty man of war. He was brave, he was courageous, and he had skills. He was a multi skilled man. He was also able to raise a great army. Now, the army of David had the people we call the mighty men of David. Now, these are men who were able to fight great wars and win them. One of them was able to kill 800 people single-handedly with a spear. Unfortunately, in one of the times when David went out to war, in his absence, the Amalekites, who were also part of the enemies, invaded his territory, burned the whole city, and David found himself in a crisis. And we want to look at how David handled that crisis and learn a few lessons. How we can also adjust ourselves and rule and reign over a crisis. Let's walk together now into the word of God, looking at 1 Samuel chapter 30. We, we are going to be looking at the whole of that chapter. 
David and his men reached Ziklag on the third day. Now the Amalekites had raided the Negev and Ziklag. They had attacked Ziklag and burnt it, and had taken captive the women and everyone else in it, both young and old. They killed none of them, but carried them off as they went on their way. When David and his men reached Ziklag, they found it destroyed by fire, and their wives and sons and daughters taken captive. Now, this was a sudden calamity that had befallen on this mighty man of God. If you are talking about a crisis, David found himself in a sudden crisis. Now, what must he do? He must be able to adjust. If he does not adjust to the crisis he was in, David was going to be a past tense. Now, there are three things I find that were happening to him at that time. Number one is that David became very desperate. Desperation means that David did not know what to do. He must have felt forsaken. Yes, he had his army, but he also had God. And maybe he was asking God, I went pursuing my enemies. Why did you allow another enemy into my territory and to come and do all of this? In verse number four, the Bible says, So David and his men wept aloud until they had no strength left to weep. That is basically what people do when they are desperate, when they are not able to fight, when they are not able to react. They retreat into tears and they begin to weep. Now, the Bible says, David and all his men wept and wept until there was no more strength left on the inside. Just tells you how desperate the situation was in his life. And this, uh, this day, maybe that's how you feel. You are desperate. Maybe you've lost your income. You have lost your job. You have lost what you treasured most. You've lost opportunities, and you feel desperate. I want to let you know, David felt the same. Number two, David also felt a victim. It was not just the city that was taken captive. It was not just that people had lost what they had. In verse number five, the Bible says, David's two wives had been captured. One of them was called Ahinoam of Jezreel and Abigail, the widow of Nabal. Now, this was a young woman that David had just inherited from Nabal when he died. And, you know, he was looking forward to living life with her and raising children with her. But then suddenly he comes home and he finds the enemy did not just invade the villages and the city, but they struck right in the heart of the kingdom. They went for his two wives. David must have felt frustrated. He must have felt weakened. He must have felt defeated, helpless, subdued, and his expectations were not met. Now, the Bible says that when our expectations are not met, that leads into a sickness. So David was a victim, and he must have felt sick on his inside. And that's how sometimes we feel when we are in crisis. You feel like the world has stopped. You feel nobody understands you. Nobody identifies with you. You feel not only desperate, but sometimes you are actually a victim. As you are listening to me right now, maybe you are sick in hospital. Maybe you're in a quarantine center. Maybe you don't know what's going to happen to you. Maybe you've just lost your job. Maybe your income has just been slashed. Or maybe your landlord has served you a notice this morning telling you to vacate your house and you feel a victim of what is happening. I want you to know the matter is not yet over. God wants you to adjust to the reality that you find yourself in. The third thing that we find in the life of David is that he went into a depression. Brothers and sisters, when you are in Ziklag, you have to battle the spirit of depression. Oh yeah, and there are many men in God's word who also suffered the spirit of depression. Elijah was one of them. After he was, after he was intimidated by Jezebel, the man went into a depression. Now look at what the Bible says in verse number six. David was greatly distressed. David was greatly distressed. That means the man was almost going into a depression. 
But why was he in such a situation? The man who should have stood with him to encourage him and to fight with him. The Bible says they were talking of stoning him. Each one was bitter in spirit because of his sons and their daughters. Now this is what happens. A time comes when people blame you for their personal problems. More so when you are the leader. If you are a father in the family, you are the pastor, you are the head of state. When people find they are not able to fix the problem in a crisis, they tend to blame you for the problems that they are having. And that is where David found himself in. Now listen to this. Every one of us is going to have a zigzag moment. This COVID crisis is affecting all of us, but in different proportions. And I want to speak to you today. Maybe you feel depressed. Maybe you feel a victim. Or maybe you feel you are desperate. That is not the end of the story. We want to turn now to the word of God and see how David adjusted himself and was able to sail out of the problem. Because unless you adjust yourself, you will drown and you will die. And I come to prophesy to somebody this day that you will not drown, you will not die in your situation. God is going to help you to adjust your life and you are going to become victorious. Several things I want, I want us to learn today about David. Number one, David found strength in the Lord. In the midst of desperation, feeling a victim, and when he was right in depression, he realized, if I'm going to sink deep, my men are also going to sink deeper with me. And the whole nation of Israel is going to go down. And therefore, he takes a personal initiative. He takes a decision. Instead of sitting here and I die, I am going to find strength in the Lord my God. That is what is recorded in verse number six. David found strength in the Lord his God. I want to talk to you today in the name of Jesus. Regardless of the crisis that you are in, I am not even able to tell how deep the crisis could be in. You can find your strength in God. You can reach out to him. You can connect to him. And like David, you can make a difference in your life. Now look at this. When we are in crisis, we are weakened. But you can reach out to the strength of God and replace your weakness with that strength. In the book of Nehemiah chapter 8 and verse number 10, Nehemiah told the people, the joy of the Lord is our strength. That means in the midst of the crisis that we find ourselves in, if we learn how to trust in God, we will find strength in the Lord. Our money may not help us at the moment. Our government may not help us at the moment. Not even our relatives are able to come and assist us. But you as a son of God, instead of allowing depression and being a victim to destroy your life, you can reach out to God and connect with him and find strength in him. And when you find strength, you'll be able to arise and move forward. Where do you find your strength? I want to recommend to you the word of God. It's one of the central places where you find strength for your inner person. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 33, and verse number 2, this is what the Bible says. Lord, be gracious to us. It is a prayer that God's people are making. Oh, Lord, be gracious to us. We long for you. In the midst of our crisis, we long for you. Then he says, be our strength every morning our salvation in time of distress. That was a prayer that was made by God's people. It's a prayer I want to recommend that you also make and tell the Lord, I may not even have a job. I may not even have supplies. I may not know what to do, but God be my strength every morning. Even as the dawn is breaking every day, pray that the strength of God is going to come to you. Now, the Bible says about David, and he found strength in the Lord his God. Now, how can we find strength in our current crisis? What are the practical steps that we can take to be able to find strength? Number one, read, memorize, 
and meditate scriptures that minister strength and motivation to your spirit. I repeat that again. Read, memorize, and meditate scriptures that minister strength and motivation to your spirit. Now, most of us, when we are in a crisis, we forget about the Bible. We just want to call people. We are just screwed on TV, watching news throughout 24-7. By the end of the day, you are so fearful, you even sink deeper into a depression. I want to encourage you right now, as a way of finding your strength in the Lord, read memorize and meditate on scriptures. And there are many scriptures you can meditate upon. For example, the Bible says, I shall not die, but I shall live to proclaim the praises of God. That's a scripture you need to memorize. Put it in your heart. The Lord says, fear not. The Bible says, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. I want to underline one more scripture that I want to introduce to you as a scripture that you can memorize over this time. Psalm 138 and verse number 9. The Bible says, Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve my life. Oh, hallelujah. That is a prophetic word. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve my life. You stretch out your hand against my foes. With your right hand, you save me. Why don't you memorize that? Why don't you remember that? Why don't you keep it in your heart? Why don't you keep it right before your eyes? That every day when you wake up, you remember that, that the Lord will preserve you. The second thing I want to remind you on how to find strength is to meditate, focus, and confess what is positive. Now, right now, if we are not careful, we can change what we say and what we talk about. There's a lot of negative talk, hopelessness, helplessness that you find on WhatsApp, some of the forwards that you find, some of the lies, exaggerations. Many of what people are passing across is inaccurate information. It is spreading fear. And this is what many Christians are doing. They are spending all their time focusing on that, meditating on that, forwarding that, posting that. We are coming to say that is coming to an end. As a way of finding strength in God, meditate and confess what is positive. This is what the Bible says in the book of Philippians chapter 4 and verse number 8. Philippians chapter 4 and verse number 8. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Oh yeah, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Now the Bible says that as a man thinketh, so is he. If you want to change a man, change what is in his mind. Change the content of his meditation. And Apostle Paul is warning us right now that we need to come to a point where we take care of the things that we are thinking on a day-to-day -day basis. That's one of the ways to find strength. If you are spending all your time with negative information, people who are speaking lies, people who are speaking exaggerated information, you are going to sleep in weakness instead of sleeping in strength. But this is my prayer, that you are going to come to a point where you are able to select on what you think and what you focus on in life. Thirdly, as a way of fighting strength in God, is listen to anointed preaching of God's word. This produces faith in your heart. Listen to anointed preaching of God's word because this will produce faith in your heart. The Bible says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Now, I need to repeat myself once again. There's a lot of garbage out there. There's a lot of garbage. False prophets have risen right now. Many people are predicting all kinds of evil. Many people are taking things out of context. And instead of building our faith 
They are destroying the faith and spreading fear and confusion. There is a time for you to also have high level discernment, to be able to discern who is a man of God and who is a man of men, who is appealing to your emotions, who is appealing to fear in your heart, and who is coming with the word of God to speak to you. I want to encourage you, don't listen to every other preacher you find on the internet, you find on TV. You must be able to censor what you listen and what you treasure on your inside. There are people you listen to, by the end of the day, there is no faith, there is nothing that is God is building in your heart apart from fear. When David was in crisis, the Bible says, and David strengthened himself in the Lord God Almighty. And that's what I want to encourage you. As a son of God, encourage yourself in the Lord God Almighty. Pick the word of God. Read the word of God. Meditate on the word of God. Memorize the word of God. Confess the word of God. And listen to anointed preaching of the word of God. And your life will begin to adjust. You find strength. And with that strength, you are able to come to a new day. It's my prayer that today, you will change your life. You will not walk in weakness again. There are things you are not able to change. We are not able to change this crisis, but we can adjust our hearts. We can make sure that we come out stronger and we come stronger by connecting with the power of the Most High God. May the Lord bless you as you are reaching out to God. I pray that as you reach out to him, you will find him and that you are going to walk in strength you are going to climb to a higher mountain in the name of Jesus Christ. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Please stay tuned. We are going to be continuing even with more messages to encourage you and to speak faith into your heart that you may be able to adjust over this time of the crisis. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Amen. Bye-bye.